Time is a precious commodity. Hey Pinnacle Studio peeps, how y'all doing out there? My name is Malik and I'm back on your screen with more Pinnacle Studio love from PinnacleStudioPro.com. Today I'm gonna to be bringing you a tutorial on time clocks or countdowns. So let's jump right in to Pinnacle Studio 20 Ultimate and make it happen. Here we are in Pinnacle Studio 20 Ultimate. Before I get started, I wanna remind you guys to subscribe to Pinnacle Studio Pro for great tips and tricks like this every Saturday. Let's make it happen, people. Here in the timeline, you can see that I have a video clip of a lady. She's gonna swim. She's gonna start a little race, a little backstroke thing. She's gonna get her health on, okay? And so I wanna go ahead and count down until the moment that she takes off to start swimming. And then after that, I wanna start to time how long it's gonna take her to swim. So I need a countdown and then I need a timer to time the time of the swim. So in order to do that, I need to get my playhead to a position where she takes off and starts swimming. So I'm gonna grab the scrubber and I'm gonna move my playhead over to a spot where I think is good. And let me hit play here and see. Yeah, it looks pretty good to me. So I'm gonna go move my playhead back here. And I am now at one second and 20 frames. My timeline is set to 24 frames per second. And this clip on the timeline is also a 24 frames per second clip, okay? So we're at one second and 20 frames. So now that I know that, I'm going to split my clip here. Now I need to add the time clock. So there's a few different ways I can do that. If I left click on this clip, I can then right click on it, go to open effects editor, then I can go to add-ons, New Blue Video Essentials 4. And then I can choose Time Clock. Now there are several different time clocks that you can choose from. If you want to, you can go up to here where it says Select Preset, and then you can browse through and click on any one of these clocks that you see, and it'll give you a preview of that clock here in the preview. So there's one of them. If I don't feel like going through all of them and looking at each one, there's another way that I can access these clocks. So I'm going to click on cancel. And now I'm going to click on this project bin tab because I don't use it really. And I'm going to go to navigation, content, Effects, New Blue Video Essential 4, Time Clock. Now what that does is it opens up all of the clocks that I can choose from in the media library and now I can get a quick preview of each one of these just by clicking on it from here and looking at what each one looks like as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select time clock, LCD display. I'm going to left click on this, hold down my left mouse, drag this down to the clip until I see an arrow and a little plus sign. Then I'm going to let go of my left mouse. So now that clock is applied to the clip. So at this point, I need to make some adjustments to the clock. So I'm going to double click on this clip with my left mouse. And then I'm gonna click on time clock. So now the effect properties open up. Once again, if I wanted to look at the different types of clocks, I could do that from here if I wanted to. Well, the first setting that we have here is position X. This allows us to move the clock horizontally. So we can move it over to wherever we want. Then we have position Y, so that lets us move it vertically. 
And then we have size, so we can make it bigger or smaller. And then we have the style of the digits. So we have LCD, we have digital, we have brash, we have all kinds of things. I'm gonna leave it on LCD. And then we have overlay. So if I uncheck overlay, we'll be able to see the swimmer now. Then we have the text. So we can change the text color by clicking on that and then moving it to where we want and clicking on apply. That changes that. Then we can change the background color, same way. And then we can change the opacity of the background so we can make it more transparent or less transparent. So the next section is the start time. So usually if you're counting up, you want it to start at zero. So you leave everything at all zeros. But for me, I want to do a countdown. So remember when I said we had split the clip at one second and 20 frames? Well, that's what we want to use at our start time because that's how long this clip is. And if we're going to do a countdown, we need to do it from the end to zero. So we're going to change this to one second and 20 frames. All right. So it doesn't show the exact time right now because our playhead is not at the end or the beginning. So I'm going to just leave my playhead where it is for now. So now we need to change the time format. So right now we have hours, minutes, seconds selected. I want to include frames. So I'm going to click on frames and I don't need hours. Uh, if it was a long race, then maybe we would want to have minutes too, but I'm going to take minutes off. So now it's just seconds and frames. All right. So the next thing we have the separator. So right now it's set to being a dot. So I can make it a semicolon. I can make it a colon. And I think I'll leave it set to colon. And the next thing we need to change is the frames per second. So as I stated, my clip and my timeline are set to 24 frames per second. So I'm going to move this to 24 so that it matches the clip. And then the last thing I have on here is countdown. So if I were to move this all the way to the beginning, I said I wanted to start at one second and 20 frames. So that's where it's starting at. All right. But if I do countdown, I want to click on countdown. And now what should happen is it'll count down from a minute, or I'm sorry, one second and 20 frames to zero at the end. Before it would have been one second and 20 frames. If I uncheck countdown, it's gonna count up from there. Okay. So now that we have it set to countdown, it's gonna go down. So I'm good to go. So I can click on okay. So now if I hit play, it's going to count down to zero and she'll start swimming. All right. So now let's say for this one, like I said, I want to count up. So I'm just going to do the same exact thing, except I'm not going to use countdown. So I'm going to drag this down here. I'm going to double click on this clip. I'm going to click on time clock, uncheck the overlay. We'll take hours off of here. We're going to leave the start time at zero because remember we wanted to start the start of the race. So it's going to be zero and up. We'll include frames since we have frames on the first one. Change it to colon. Make sure our frame per second is correct. So move that up to 24. And now if I put this to the beginning and hit play, it should go up. Now I might want to put this at a different position because I don't know, it's just me. 
Maybe... I want it to be in a different place when it starts counting her swimming. I don't know. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and click on OK. And now if I play this whole thing back, it should count down. And then as soon as she starts swimming, it should count up. There you go, people. A countdown and time code in Pinnacle Studio 20 Ultimate. All right, Pinnacle Studio peeps, I want to thank you for watching this video all the way through to the end. It truly means the world to me. And now I want to send a quick shout out to one of my subscribers, The Zone XP. The Zone XP makes videos on gaming, walkthroughs, let's play, tutorials. He's got the whole realm of gaming covered, okay? So go over to his channel, check out a couple of his videos. If you're feeling what he's dealing, make sure that you subscribe to The Zone XP. If you want to get a shout out like the Zone XP did, make sure that you go to the video description and fill out the shout out request form. If you got a tutorial request, then go to the video description and fill out the tutorial request form. Now that I'm done with that, I got a few things I need you to do for me. The thumb. The one that's pointed in the upward direction, make sure you click on it because it lets people know that the content in this video is good and that they should watch it too. If you got any comments, questions, you just want to chop it up with your boy, leave those things in the comment section below. And last but not least, smash that subscribe button. And after you do that, click on the bell. When you do that, you receive notifications every time I upload content to YouTube. And that way you don't miss out on any of the learning and all of the fun. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.